Hello and welcome to another episode of Brewery Towns, the podcast that talks about brewing beer throughout the country. In this episode, Madeline and I travel down to Albuquerque, New Mexico to talk about the rich brewing history that that city has. We will talk about how it flourished before Prohibition, how Prohibition really hit hard, and how they didn't really recover until the 1990s. And then we will talk about the plethora of modern breweries that have spurred up in this city. And as always, keep sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to keep up with our latest episodes. And now, another episode of Brewery Towns. Welcome to another episode of Brewery Towns, the podcast that talks about brewing beer throughout the country. My name is Matt, and I am joined today via telephone by Madeline. Hello, thanks for having me. And M- Madeline, where, where are you at now? So I'm in North Texas, and uh, we are enjoying some nice uh, sunny spring weather today, even though it's still in the 50s. We'll, we'll take it since it's not raining. Yeah, it's nice down here too in Houston, and next week we're going to be breaking records. We're going to get close to 90. Oh my gosh. <laughs> still in March. I know, it's, ar- it's already happening. Yeah, break the shorts up. <laughs> I, I already have. <laughs> I already have. Well, thank you for joining us today. We have a a good episode. We're going to be talking about Albuquerque, New Mexico. Have you ever been there? I have not. I've been to New Mexico before, like Santa Fe, Taos area, um, but not Albuquerque. Awesome. Well, I went there last fall for a museum conference and loved it. Loved the scenery there. I always wanted to go to, that's like the first time I've ever been to the Southwest. And and it, it was just as beautiful as I imagined. Uh, and I got to go to some of the, the places we'll be talking about later today. Um, but this is, yeah, this is going to be a good episode, I think. I'm excited. Yeah, so before we get started, I just always like to say the sources, just because they provide so much free information for us and make this a lot easier than it could have been. Uh, so for this episode, we got info from Albuquerque Journal, Brewery Collectibles Club of America, and NM Darkside Brew Crew. Oh, cool. Well, we are historians, so we love good sources. I know, I know. And oh, did you see that J store? I think is is free now. What during during oh, the crisis? That is, and I didn't see that, but that's super cool. I know it's dangerous, really. I know it's like a whole world of research. <laughs> I know. Okay, well, let's get started. Albuquerque is located in central New Mexico. If you look at a map, it's pretty much left a little bit left of the central point of New Mexico, and it's halfway between Phoenix and Denver. Those are both. If you get in your car, they're about six to seven hours away from Albuquerque. And it is the county seat of Bernalillo County. I, I don't, that's probably not how you say it. I don't I always get confused with the double L's. Well, it makes like, it's supposed to make like a Y sound, like a tortilla, like. Mm, so Bernalillo, Bernalillo, yo. Okay. Maybe, I don't know. I need to see it spelled out. Yes, I, I say everything very ger- Germanic. <laughs> of course, because the high school German is coming in handy. Mm-hmm. Sister P would be proud. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta make the nuns proud. <laughs> so it's the county seat of Bernalillo County, and it is the base. It sits at the base of the Sandia Mountain Range, uh, which I think runs up, um, like we were talking about earlier, up to the ski uh, ranges in northern New Mexico. Okay, cool. um, but at this point, it's a pretty beautiful site. They're about eleven thousand feet tall, and you can take a like a a ski lift, an enclosed ski lift thing, all the way up to the to, to the summit, which is pretty cool. Ooh, I bet that's gorgeous. And it, it, it was it was super nice. I highly recommend. Um, so Albuquerque is a pretty big city. It has about 550,000. It's by far the biggest city in New Mexico. I think the next one is Las Cruces, and that's about 100,000. Yeah, because it's pretty rural out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's why people like it. Yeah, it's nice. So city, 550,000, but the metro has almost a million. So it's a pretty significant um, slice of heaven out there. Yeah, really. I didn't realize it was that big. No, yeah, me either. Me either. I, I think people forget about it because it doesn't have like a, a professional sports team or anything. Yeah, so, so it's true. not like Phoenix. Yeah. yeah. But now with COVID nineteen, we don't have sports anymore, so we have to just find something else to like grab onto. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> like, like podcasting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Albuquerque's nickname is the Duke City. And they call it that because it's named for Francisco Fernandez de la Cueva, who was the 10th Duke of Albuquerque. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't know we had Dukes in Albuquerque, yeah. but that's cool. Well, I, I thought, I think of Duke as more of like an English manor 
kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's very like Pride and Prejudice, like duke. Yeah. Out of- and I didn't know it was like the Spanish did it too, and 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 I don't, I don't even know what a duke is. I, I mean, that's a good question. <laughs> I feel like this is like the issue of the governor's palace in San Antonio. Like, <laughs> yeah. they just don't know what anything is. Yeah, yeah, we have no idea. We just guess. <laughs> Yes, but if you go there and call it the Duke City, I think you're, you would impress a lot of people. Okay, cool. I will, I'll add that to my notes for future travels. <laughs> and Albuquerque, I mean, it's a very strange name. It has two, two Qs in it, and it actually comes from the Latin words meaning white and oak. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so I guess there's a lot. I, I, didn't, I didn't see any white oaks there, but if they named it <laughs> after that, I guess... I wonder if that's, like, kind of, like, mesquite wood. Like, I wonder if those are similar. I don't know. Obviously, I don't know anything about wood, so. (laughs) I don't know anything about wood either. What are you going to do? Yeah, we're we're just making it the best we can. (laughs) Yeah, but it's it's also known for the International Balloon Fiesta. And if you look up pictures, it looks like a painting. There's just, like, hundreds of balloons out. Like like hot air balloons, not, like, party balloons. That's super cool. I've seen pictures of that. Yeah, that'd be be cool to go to. Oh, yeah. And then every episode we like to say um, a couple people that are from that hometown. And okay. I- I'll let you guess this one. It's one of the main characters from How I Met Your Mother. Uh, is it is it Robin? No, not Robin. She's Canadian. Oh, oh, oh true. Well, are, wait, is it like the main character or the actor? It's the actor. Okay, okay. Um, I feel like maybe Neil Patrick Harris is from... That's right, yeah. He's from Albuquerque. Oh, and then another cool. one, I, I want you to guess this one too. Uh, she oh. started off as a Disney star, like Disney Channel star, and now she's she's like a pop star. Okay, uh, Miley Cyrus? No, she's not from. No, not Miley. Um, uh, I don't think Lizzie McGuire is from, or Hillary Duff is from there either. Nope. nope. Um, I don't know. Those are the only two I can think of. Demi Lovato. Oh. Camp Rock, how could I forget mm-hmm. that? She, she was a little bit later, so I feel like yeah. our, our generation moved on from Disney Channel yeah, at that time. True. Or that's what we tell people. Yeah, yeah, we don't admit that we watched it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, the history of Albuquerque goes back thousands of years, so the Pueblo people called this place home, and they actually carved a lot of images into the salt there. Uh, oh. There used to be a large volcano, and it erupted, and then it left... Um, this salt, it's called basalt, I think is how you pronounce it. Okay, interesting. And so they could carve things easily into that. And there's actually 24,000 images that range from 1000 BC to about 1600 AD. Oh my god, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. That is so old. I, I know, I know. And they're all uh, within the Petroglyph National Monument Park. Okay, cool. That, I never think of stuff in America being like that old. That old. I know, it, it's like really, really harsh of us. We, we just... Yeah, I... Like, if it, if it was before 1776, it yeah. didn't happen. Yeah. So I, I, I just like to always say that. Just each one of these towns, there were people living in it before Europeans. and Yes, very true. I, I would like to know more about what they drank, but it's, it's there's not too much information on that. Badly. I'll have to go on JSTOR and do yeah. some research well, now. We have time. <laughs> yeah. So the, the Spanish started to come in here because the, it was an outpost, Albuquerque was an outpost on the El Camino Real Trail, which was a trade route between Mexico City and Santa Fe. Okay. And Santa Fe, um, we talked about it, it's, it's about one hour north of Albuquerque. And so in 1821, the old town was established, and this is the, the touristy section of town now because they still have the plaza and they have this really old church um, on one side, and then they just kind of have shops and, um, to- you know, tourist traps and restaurants and stuff like that oh, yeah. surrounding it. But it's, you can still, like, feel the history of it. It's pretty cool. And let's be honest, everybody loves a good tourist trap. Like I know. I loved it. They're there for a reason because they're fun. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I agree. I agree. I did. Uh, I was off from the conference for one lunch um, because I was poor and couldn't pay for it. And... <laughs> I went to this all-you-can-eat Italian restaurant in Albuquerque, and the, no one else was in there besides for me. So they just made one pizza with like eight different toppings on it, but they were all arranged in like slices. That's amazing. And then they just had this like lukewarm pasta and like uh, a couple leaves of salad or something like that. And it was great. I loved it. It was it was like perfect, but it was just really really weird. It doesn't 
sounds like too bad of an arrangement. Like a whole Italian buffet to myself. Like I could get behind that. <laughs> I know you could. <laughs> <laughs> so Old Town was in 1821, and then New Town came because the train depot came in 1880. So they established New Town by the train depot, and that's where the downtown is now. Um, but you can walk from this Old Town section to downtown. It's a pretty decent walk, but I, I did it a couple times there. So they're not too far ap- apart, but. Um, the old town just became touristy, and then the new town was was where the business and the commerce was. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, so they had they had one. I, I want to say like one branch, uh, a, a brewery with just one brewery with many branches in it, before prohibition, and that brewery oh. was called Demars and Koenig Brewery. Okay. And it was founded in 1883, so after the railroad came, and the owners were Joe Demars and John Koenig. And the Albuquerque Journal, I, I, I'm going to read you the, the whole quote from the Albuquerque <laughs> Journal about this one guy. Joe DeMars says if they don't turn out beer equal to anything manufactured in the East, he will treat the city to a keg of beer apiece. Oh, and sorry. Joe, and this is the best part, and Joe generally knows what he is talking about. <laughs> End quote. That's hysterical. So it seems like Joe knows what he's talking about. Uh, but they were they were pretty successful. Unfortunately, his partner John Koenig was shot and killed outside the brewery a couple years years later. Drama. And, and yeah, and they never found out who it was, but people think it was Joe Demars, his partner. Ooh, I know. Ooh, I know. Uh, that's some intrigue. I feel like that could be like a forensic files episode. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. So the um, a fire destroyed the the first structure. is actually just an adobe structure. So once that fire happened, they reorganized after that, and in 1887, they became the Southwestern Brewery and Ice Company. And so Joe DeMars was still a partner in this, but the main group was now Don Thomas and William Rankin. Oh. And you're going to like this. They were salesmen for the Reading Iron Works at a Reading PA. Oh, wow. Small I know. world. I know. And they sold ice machines, which, which they called Rankin machines. And oh. so the brewery... The brewery bought one of these, but they couldn't pay for it. So instead of taking it back, they took ownership of the brewery for the unpaid bills. Huh. So, okay, historical question. Mm -hmm. Did it... Okay, so I know, like, drinking... Like, Europe drinks warm beer and Americans drink cold beer. Mm -hmm. Did Americans drink cold beer back then, too? I would say it was probably pretty warm. Okay, because I was just... It made me think of it with, like, the ice company and the brewery. Mm -hmm. But... Well, okay, sorry, got off track. No, 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 it, it depends what beer you're drinking. You know, some beers are, are supposed to be served a little bit warmer. Yeah. Um, so, like, lagers, they didn't start to make lagers in America for a while because they didn't have the capacity to keep it cool. Oh, okay, mm-hmm. okay. But, so that's why you see a lot of these, like, Southwestern Brewery and Ice Company. Like, the breweries <laughs> were also the biggest manufacturers of ice. Interesting, okay. Because mm-hmm. I guess it kind of went hand in hand. Mm-hmm, Exactly. Exactly. So their new product that these guys made was called Glorietta Lager Beer. And Glorietta is named after a local mountain range where a Civil War battle was fought. Oh. Isn't that crazy? I I still don't think I believe that because you don't think of the Civil War happening in New Mexico. Yeah, like, I feel like it didn't, like, New Mexico was still sort of like a new, a new, I don't even think it was a territory yet. Yeah, I, I... (laughs) I, I, I would fact check that. Yeah, uh, same, same. I'm going I'm to call a fact check on yeah. that one. <laughs> but maybe, maybe. Yeah, it's a possibility, you know? <laughs> yeah. So they had this Glorietta Lager beer, and I really like this. They held these things called Bach parties. Oh, my gosh. Not block parties, but Bach parties. <laughs> and they would just tap barrels and just kind of give it out to their citizens. It would just be a big get-together. That sounds amazing. I know. I feel like... Th- Think th- that would be something that a brewery would do today, have a Bach party. Oh, yeah, absolutely. They would just make you pay for the beer there. <laughs> That's true. They would, they, they would give you, make you pay a, like $20 to get in and then like $7 for each beer. Yeah, really, because, you know, the ec- economics or whatever. <laughs> the economics, yeah. Uh, so uh, they switched to brick buildings um, in the late part of the 19th century. And one of their buildings actually was the tallest excuse me, was the tallest in New Mexico at one time. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. And some of these buildings, they're, on, they're some of the only ones 
from this 19th century century industrial boom that still remain in the area. Oh, that's cool. Mm-hmm. So I, I probably saw them when I went. I just I didn't know what they were. Yeah, that was going to be my next question. Was like, are any of them still there? Yeah, yeah. yeah well, uh, part of this brewery is still there. Okay, cool. Yeah, but it's it's only one of the only few that remain from that time, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that is cool. So, just going through the history, um, Jacob and Henry Loeb's. Jacob was the new brewmaster, and Henry was the new secretary and treasurer. And they kind of took over the brewery. Um, they had experience in the Cherokee Brewery in St. Louis. So then they came down to Al- Albuquerque, and they made capital improvements to the structure that really, really helped things along. Um, and the brewery was going really great at the time, and it was one of the largest employers in the city. However, when they made these improvements and angered the Rankins, you know, the, the men from the Reading Ironworks. Yeah. And they actually sued each other for mismanagement. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, and this was just part, just one part of the legal trouble that th- these guys had. Um, the other part's kind of funny. So employees stole barrels and sold <laughs> them to saloons at half price. <laughs> so I, I don't know how they thought they would get away with this. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, it's pretty genius, you know, instead I mean, of, yeah. you know. Well, you, but I, don't, yeah, I would just steal them to drink. I would be like, I'm like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I agree. I agree. But this was such big news that the Secret Service actually came to town to investigate <laughs> can you imagine like being like an fbi agent or a secret service agent like i gotta go investigate this barrel stealing yeah in albuquerque new mexico <laughs> yeah that would make for a good show i think oh absolutely uh, lots of possibilities here lots of good stories oh yeah so they you know had some legal trouble and then they reorganized again in 1915 and they became the western brewery and ice company and the people there must have just been fed up with these guys because the new owner was just a local bank. They're just like, we're not even going to deal with you. We're going to own this. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, Prohibition came the next year, and the Western Brewery could no longer make beer. They just made ice, and they also became a bottling company. Uh, mm-hmm. interesting. And so there, some of the products that they made, they made distilled water for medical purposes. Of, of and course. then in addition to that, they made automobile batteries. Oh, wow. That's yeah. like a big jump. Yeah, so one spectrum to, to the other, I feel like. Water and batteries. <laughs> yeah, it's not as exciting as beer. Yeah, and and unfortunately, they never started rebrewing, or they never re- restarted brewing after oh, Prohibition. Man. They just kind of kept with the water and the batteries. That's a bummer. I know, it's sad. It's really sad. A lot of these places, It's. I mean, it's like it is now. You know, some of these places probably won't ever start up again after this virus crisis yeah it is it's terrible i know so luckily they did get a brewery for a period of time after prohibition the new mexico brewing company was founded in 1936 the head master o.s schultz he was the seventh generation of brewers from vienna austria oh wow so this guy knew what he was doing yeah for real and he worked before he came there he even worked at a couple breweries in arizona and idaho before settling there and they did not bottle. They only draft, made made beer for draft. So they just sent it out to the local saloons. And I guess things were going good because they actually sold the company a year after it was founded. And it changed its name to the Rio Grande Brewing Company, which I like. Yeah, and the, I like that too. And the new owner was Paul von Gontard, which who, who which is or whom, whom or who? Uh, I, I think who. Who? Who? I don't know. I don't know. Who who is the grandson was the grandson of of Adolphus Bush of the Bush oh. the Bush brewery fame. Oh, so it's, it's so he's got the beer in his genes too. That's right. That's it. Yeah, that's right. So, um he actually owned the General Brewing Corporation which was based in San Francisco. So, I think what happened is they just kind of bought a lot of these uh local breweries in the area and just kind of formed a conglomerate. Yeah, but when he took over, they they suffered for some reason because they closed in 1939, and they finished with 120 dollars in debt. <laughs> so that closed in 1939, and um, you know breweries didn't come back in the area until this this wave of of craft beer. Uh, so in Albuquerque, they there was like a pattern. The first breweries were just added on to existing restaurants, and oh, then. Okay. And then there were brew pubs, which is pretty much 
a brewery that has a restaurant in it. Yeah. And then they finally went to the more modern version, which is just uh, a brewery that's in, you know, a production facility. It's kind of what you think of a brewery now. Do you think that was because of, like, liquor laws? Or I'm sure it was. was. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm sure okay. it was. Yeah, because I was like, I know that so many places have had to sort of, like, change the, you know, change the laws so that they have more flexibility to brew. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in, in some of the, the cities that I've researched so far, I mean, some of these laws didn't change until, like, 2015. Yeah, well, that was, like, you know, in Salado, when Barrow Brewing, like, started, they had to get the village to vote, and one of their beers is named after the number of votes that it took to mm, approve it. That's really cool. I, I know I know John's working on a Salado episode. Oh, man, okay, so I won't give it all away then. Yeah, no, I, I, that's going to be a really good one, I think. Oh, yeah. yeah. I know. We should, all, we should all do that one. Yeah. Ag- agreed. Agreed. Okay. So we're not going to talk about every brewery because there's just so many there, but we're just kind of going to try to make a story and just talk about um, in- important pieces to that story. Okay. So the first brewery and the oldest one in town is Vicino Brewing Company, and it was located within Vicino Wood Oven Pizzeria. Oh, okay. The, always a good pairing, pizza and beer. Mm-hmm. And if you go on the uh, Great American Beer Festival's website, they show all the winners from the past years. And these guys were winning medals from 1995 all the way up into present day. Oh, wow. So it was probably really good beer. Um, If you go to Albuquerque now, you cannot go to Vicenia Brewing Company because it is now under the name of Canteen Brewhouse. Oh. And they they make the Wet Mountain IPA. And that's okay. that's the one that uh, was earned the first their first medal at the at the beer festival in 1995. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, and I don't have the I usually have the untapped rating to go along with this, but you guys are gonna have to look that up on your own for that one. Okay, so yeah. next is Tractor Brewing, founded in 1999. And oh, I, have, I think I have a sticker from this one. Yep. So I I went to this one. This one's still around under the same name. And so I didn't go to the original location because it was out in Las Lunas, which was about 30 minutes from Albuquerque. And the uh, the founder, the owner, Herb Plumer, he actually wanted to make this brewery he, called a beer farm. So I think the idea he had is he, he'll go out in the suburbs, he'll have this beer farm, and then he'll grow everything to make the beer. So everything will be in-house. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I don't. I, that's what I think it means. I, I couldn't find too much information about what the hell a beer farm is. Yeah, it sounds like rural hippie. Yeah, but now um, when I was looking up the Cooperstown episode, a brewery there is, I I forget the name, but there is a term now that breweries can be if they use like 100% local ingredients. Oh, that is really interesting. mm -hmm. So this guy was ahead of his time. And it's probably, yeah, it's probably why they're still around. They They moved to Albuquerque in 2014 and they, they are now in the position or in the location where I went to go see them, which is just outside of downtown. Okay. And they, the product that I wanted to highlight is the Farmer's Tan, because they're tracker <laughs> tracker brewing. Farmer's Tan Red Ale, 3.52 on Untapped. Oh, okay. And I, I, I guess this is a good place to put in the story. So Albuquerque is known as, as a rough town by some people. You know, the homeless population there is really high. Okay. Um, So when I went there, I went to Tractor on my last day. I was flying out that afternoon. So I had my little rolly suitcase, and I had um, my jacket tied around my waist just because it was kind of cold, and then it was hot, and then it was cold, it was hot. Um, Okay, but what what do we call that style? What is it called? It's called Knobles. Yes, yes. Named after a a small theme park in northern Pennsylvania. Of course. Because all the moms just tied it around their waist, so it's the (laughs) Knobles look. Uh, so I was rocking that look, and I, I I roll up to the first brewery, and it opens at 11 a.m., so I got there at, like, 11.05, and I was just outside. Um, I was taking pictures because um, the place across from this brewery, which I will not name, uh, was called Creamland, and it was, like, a dairy supplier, and I was like, oh, that's, that's funny. I'm going to take a picture, um, and I could see this guy. He was setting up, like, the umbrellas outside, and um, he was, like, eyeing me up. And I was like, oh, this is weird. He must just be wondering why the hell I'm taking a picture of this building. So then he goes inside, and then I come inside, and he's like, 
he <laughs> I, I forget what he what he said but he comes up to me and he's like oh we're just like for paying customers today i'm just like okay yeah that that's great i just like, like i like want to get a beer and he's yeah. like he's like no i'm sorry like it's just for paying customers and i'm just like okay yeah i i have money to pay for this beer <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, "Oh, I'm so sorry. Like, I thought you were homeless. We've been, <laughs> we've been having trouble with him coming in." Oh my gosh! And I was That's like, terrible. "I was like, wow, I'm like slightly offended, but this is like kind of amusing." <laughs> um, but I, I was like, "Whatever, I'll still get a beer." And they gave me like as many stickers as I wanted. Um, but then afterwards, I, I sent them a, a Facebook message. I was kind of pissed, but I was like taking it lighthearted. And then they did, they didn't really apologize. They were just like, oh, we've been having trouble, so we have to be careful. And I was just like, I'm, like, wearing Nikes, guy. Like, I'm not homeless. Well, yeah, I feel like there maybe should be, like, a little more discretion, yeah. like, in that. Like, maybe he should give you an opportunity to order before yeah. he just tries to kick you out. But I really had to reevaluate my life after that because just based on appearances, this man thought I was homeless. <laughs> Like you got rethink so, some fashion choices there. Yeah. So I, I thought it was over. Um, but then I leave this brewery and I, I'm on my way to Tractor, which is just in walking distance. And I, I, this guy pulls up in a pickup truck and he yells at me. He's like, hey, man, you want some work today? And I was like, no, I don't need any work. I have a job. Like, why does everyone in this town think I'm homeless? <laughs> so that then. That's crazy. So then I just get the tractor and I tell the bartender about my time and. And oh wait, wait, wait! Tractor? I thought you were at Tractor. No, I I was at. I didn't want to say the name of the brewery. Oh, gotcha. Just, okay, sorry. Want, yeah, but I I was at an, an the first brewery and then I walked to Tractor. Okay. Um, and I was telling the bartender about it, and she's like, "Yeah, you know, sometimes they just come in, and sometimes they just want water, but then sometimes they do cause a little bit of a ruckus. So I guess you just have to be careful." Yeah. So it's, it's a shame, uh, really. It is, but, but I also I have to say I used a st- the sticker from tractor because i thought that was hysterical that like their bot their like little line on there is get plowed so, <laughs> i, I that like was, that they run with it yeah so i i love that and i put it on my uh my cup so oh good i'm glad you glad you used it okay so now that we're gonna move on from that uh the, this next brewery was founded in 2008 it's probably the most well-known in albuquerque and it's probably the biggest, most successful, and that is Marble Brewery. Okay. And so a lot of people, I thought it was really cool. Like, this was probably one of the top maybe 15 breweries that I've been to. It's just, like, a really cool vibe. But I guess with some people in the craft beer community there that it's it's known for, like, college kids going. You know, it doesn't really have, like, the, the vibe that they want. Um, oh, but, yeah. yeah which, I, which I can see because yeah. it was very, very hip. Um, but I would definitely recommend going, um, just maybe not telling anyone about it. Uh, so th- this has this has a nice um, founding story. Um, so before you know, two thousand eight, uh, Ted Rice, who was from Long Island, he noticed that they could only get beers really from Colorado and California, which were leading the craft brewery scene at that time, and people were buying them because he worked at Blue Corn Cafe and Brewery. But in the back of that, they also had this place called Chambra, Chamba Microbar. And at this microbar, you could only fit like maybe four or five people in it, but they just sold craft beer. And he could tell that they were selling um, Colorado and California beer that was canned and people were loving it. Um, so he had the idea of founding his own brewery. That's, that's and, really cool. Yeah, and that's what he did. He founded Marble. Um, their Pilsner, 3.51 on untapped. It won the gold at the 2014 World Beer Cup in the Keller Beer category. Oh, that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. And 2014 was actually a big year for Marble. They won the Great American Beer Festival Small Brewery and Brewmaster of the Year awards. Whoa, that's that's a lot. Like that's yeah. a high like, year there. Yeah, and and those are two different awards. So they won the Small Brewery award award and the Brewmaster award in oh, the wow. same year. Yeah. So I would definitely recommend drinking their beer. It's all over the place. I'm pretty sure you yeah. have a, you have a sticker from them as well. Yeah, I'm, and I think I've tried their beer before too. I just don't remember what kind. Yeah, yeah. Their their logo is like I I don't know what it's what you think of when you think of like Mayan and Native American cultures. It's like the bird head. Okay. Oh yeah, I know yeah. what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Okay, so the next brewery, uh, founded in 2010, La Cambre Brewing Company. Um, if you talk to a lot of people and you ask what brewery you should go to in Albuquerque, a lot of people say La Cambre. But the owner, Jeff Irway, was actually assistant to Ted Rice, who founded Marble at the Blue Corn Brewery. So, th- so the Blue Corn, it has like this tree coming out of it now. It started with Ted Rice, and then this guy, Jeff Ar- Irway, was assistant to Ted Rice. Yeah, and do you know what La Cambre means in Spanish? I feel like no, I don't. Is it the rooster? Um, no, I, I mean I could be saying the word wrong, so it's not okay. it's not your fault. But it means like peak or pinnacle or, or summit. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And so to go along with that, the product that I wanted to highlight is elevated IPA, four point oh four on tap. Anything above a four is like really really good. Yeah. And it it won the two thousand eleven gold medal at the Great American Beer Festival in American style IPA category. Wow, so like it sounds like Albuquerque has like a lot of award-winning beers yeah. there. Yeah, on on their website, like I said, you can type in Albuquerque and like you can just scroll down and you can see all the awards that they won. It's really impressive. That is cool. Uh, and then going off of that, the last brewery that I wanted to highlight is called Boxing Bear Brewing Company, <laughs> and it was it. founded in 2014. And the head brewer Justin Hamilton was assistant to Jeff Irway at La Cambre. Of course. Mm-hmm. So the tree continues. Um, I did not get to go to Boxing Bear, but they did have an off-site tap room um, closer to downtown that I went to, and the beer was really, really good. And I like their their logo has like a bear and it has boxing gloves on it, which is pretty cool. Oh, that's fun. I love when the logos are like kind of playful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I would recommend the Sucker Punch Double IPA if you go there, three point nine six. Ooh, that does sound good. I it's go, very mm-hmm. interesting that so many of the like people who worked at the brewery stayed in their location you know mm-hmm. like yeah I, I agree I feel like it'd be tempting to be like oh I'm just gonna go to another place and start a brewery there but it's like it's interesting they all stayed yeah I you know Albuquerque even though it may be a rougher town you know it's really beautiful there so I can see why people would want to stay that is true like the New Mexico is just such a gorgeous state the landscapes mm-hmm. are amazing agreed agreed so if you go to Albuquerque you have your choice of breweries and I'm just going to list some of them that are in Albuquerque the greater Albuquerque area but this is just some of them are you ready yes I'm ready okay La Reforma Brewery Bow and Arrow Brewing Enchanted Circle Brewing Kilt Check Brewing Company Rio Bravo Brewing which I went to Red Door Brewing Nexus Brewery 377 Brewery, Bosky Brewing, Dialogue Brewing, which I walked past, they were closed, I was pretty bummed about it, High and Dry Brewing, Sidetrack Brewing Company, Star Brother Brewing, Blue Grasshopper Brewery, which I went to one of the locations, pretty cool, Cantero Brewing Company, Palmer Brewery, Differential Brewing, Bombs Away Beer Company, Ponderosa Brewing Company, which I went to, um, and they were by the conference center, it was really cool, Toll Tech Brewing, Boza Brothers Brewing, and the last but not least, Thirsty Eye Brewing Company, which I went to, and it was half brewery, half coffee house, which was kind of weird. I think I was the only one drinking beer <laughs> at that time, and it was like my third of the day, and it was like twelve thirty. <laughs> so that's probably thought it, they probably thought I was homeless too. But that, oh, well, I guess it could be worse. <laughs> you're, you're right. You're right. But that is the story of beer in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, I love it. I It's definitely on my list because I have been wanting to get back to New Mexico. I haven't been since high school, so now I have a very good reason to go back. I know, and I, I've been trying to look up some information like on Santa Fe and Taos, too, because I think those would be interesting yeah. interesting places to go a little deeper on, too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for joining us this episode, Madeline. And no remember, remember to like us on Facebook, on Instagram, and check back soon for the next episode of Brewery Towns. Thank <music> you.